Hello and welcome to chapter 4 on probability. This is our first and in some sense only look at probability as an idea unto itself. In the first section, empirical probability, we start talking about experiments. Empirical means from evidence and we begin that discussion by looking at some vocabulary. An experiment is an activity that has specific results that can occur. In other words, built into an experiment is the idea that only certain things can happen. If I pull a card out of a deck of playing cards, I'm sure to get one of the 52 cards. If I flip a coin, I'm sure to get either heads or tails. Now, of those possible results, I don't know exactly which of those results will occur. The outcomes are the results of an experiment. The event is a set of certain outcomes that you want to happen. So the event might be getting a head when you toss a coin once. So in that case, the event is what we are interested in computing the probability for. The sample space is the collection of all possible outcomes of the experiment, and it's denoted SS. The event space is the set of outcomes that make up an event. And before you say, this is the same thing, let's talk about this fairly quickly, how an event is different from an event space. Say instead of flipping a coin once, you flipped it twice, and your event was, the thing that you're interested in having happen, the thing that you're trying to find the probability for, is the probability that you get one head in those two tosses. Well, one of the events that provides that situation is if you get a head and then a tail. But similarly, a tail and then a head is another event that constitutes what we're interested in. So the event space is the set of all outcomes that make up an event. So if we used H for heads and T's for tail, then one head and two tosses could be composed of HT and TH. Now empirical means from experiments. So let's perform an experiment. Now I know this doesn't look like an experiment because these numbers are already there and they look very, you know, they're in print and they look very accurate. But these are the results of performing an experiment. So you flip a, uh, in this case we roll a die. In the first column it tells us how many times we rolled it. So in that first example when we rolled a die ten times, we got two sixes. So our event space is the number of sixes, and then we divide those. So if you say, what is two tenths? Two tenths is 20%. It looked like in that first experiment, when we tossed a die 10 times, we got two sixes. Now, if we toss the die 50 times, in this example, a different example on a different day, you could toss it 50 times and get a different number of sixes. This is an example from an experiment. And now the relative frequency of sixes is about 12%, six fiftieths. We continue in this way, tossing the die more and more times, counting the number of sixes each time. So I did this with a spreadsheet and then just dividing and we get 18%. 500 tosses, 16.2%. A thousand tosses, 16.3%. Now a different set of experiments would have different numbers of sixes and different relative frequencies. There's nothing special about these numbers in their exactness. What's more interesting about these numbers is they are tending towards a particular value, and we'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> so what is an experimental probability? If you actually propose and conduct an experiment, what do you do with those numbers? So in each of these cases, we counted the number of times that the event occurred, in this case, the number of sixes. We counted how many times a six came up, and we divide that by the number of times that the experiment was repeated. That gives us a quotient, and that quotient is our experimental probability of that event A happening. Let's talk about this notation. This is function notation. So you are back in intermediate algebra at this point. It does not say to multiply. The P is not an operator per se. It's a name of the probability. 
function. So it's saying that the probability that A occurs. So you could read this P of A, exactly like you were back in an intermediate algebra class, and that is perfectly acceptable. In other words, that P says go and find the probability of the event called A. Now I'm quickly going to say parentheses look like multiplication. When I say P of A, of course, of is the keyword for multiplication. So you might look at this, you might hear what I'm saying and think the P is being multiplied by the A. And that is not at all the case. We're basically saying that P is finding the probability of the event A. So in our experiment, when we performed it the greatest number of times, I kind of got tired copying down these random numbers and then counting the number of sixes and all that stuff. So I stopped at 1,000. Um, we got 163 out of 1,000, or about 0.163, 16.3%. The law of large numbers is easy for people to get wrong. The idea here is that if you perform an experiment many times, you start to gauge the relative frequency at which something happens. If you toss a die twice and you get two sixes in a row, you've probably had enough experience with die to know that that is unlikely, that you're more likely to get one of the other five numbers both times. And that's simply because each of the six faces of a die is considered to be equally likely, assuming that you throw it in the correct way and it uh, lands in the correct way and all good stuff like that. For example, when you throw a coin, if it spins, it's much more likely to land on one face than the other. So as n increases, that is as you perform the experiment more and more times, the larger the number of times you perform the experiment, that relative frequency of successes, of finding what you're interested in, tends towards the actual probability value. Now, if you had any calculus, this idea of tens and this idea that there's some theoretical actual probability value out there may start to sound a lot like calculus, the limit in a calculus question. And that's very much the way that this is written so that it sounds like calculus. It sounds pretty high level. The idea itself is much simpler than that. That word tens means that in the aggregate, as n increases, that relative frequency gets closer towards the actual value. Now, why don't we just say gets closer? Why do we use the word tens? And we use the word tens because it doesn't necessarily always get closer. If I uh, have thrown the die a thousand times and I throw it 50 more, there's nothing saying that those 50 are representative of the actual probability value. I might get a little bit further away, but if I throw out another 50 or another 100 or even another 1,000, I'm going to start getting closer and closer and closer in its long-range trends. Okay, let's talk about vocabulary. Probability, relative frequency, percentage, and proportion are all the same idea. You can give probabilities as percentages, as decimals, or as fractions. You can enter fractions into my open math when you want an exact answer, enter decimals when they tell you to round it to a, percent, a particular place, and of course percentages when we're communicating our results with other people. So that's for one, the idea that we can get good answers, we can get good results if we perform experiments, and that those experiments get better as we increase the number of experiments we perform. We use the word tens because it doesn't necessarily always get us closer to the actual probability value as we increase the number of experiments, but in the aggregate, in the long term, as we increase the number of experiments, it does. Um, now we're moving on to theoretical probabilities, and that's where we're going to spend the majority of this discussion. Theoretical probabilities come from thinking about the number of ways that things can happen. So it ties back to that discussion of the event space. The idea that we're not looking for one thing out of many, that would make an easy fraction. We're looking for several things that share a particular characteristic. I'm going to use exactly the same example I used on the previous page. If I toss a coin twice and I say I'm interested in finding the probability of getting exactly one head, that might be head tails or tails head. 
there's actually two outcomes there that constitute my event space. And that's where we're going with theoretical probabilities. Now, it isn't always feasible to conduct an experiment over and over again. It might be very expensive. It might involve a lot of, of setting things up and buying new equipment. So it'd be nice to be able to do this mathematically. And we do that, we call them theoretical probabilities. Now remember, I'm teaching a classical statistics course. And in classical statistics, an experiment is considered difficult. There are ways of modeling experiments, stochastic methods, that are considered just as good. Now that requires a lot of algebra, it requires a lot of thought, it requires pretty powerful computers, and that's a topic for a different, more practical statistics course.